PCR program. So for the PCR program, so the PCR program, what we're going to discuss is the PCR process, eh? Okay. So the process is exactly the, the process we're going to set as a program in the machine. We're going to use the what we a machine called thermal cycle. So it's a machine that can control the temperature for a certain period and then change to another temperature and then control for a certain period. Okay. So there are three main phases in the PCR reaction. So first is the denature, second is aniline, the third one is the extension. You can see that the denature and the extension, the temperature is quite constant, right? Okay, there are not much changes. But the aniline temperature is quite variable. For every PCR reaction, the temperature might be slightly different. Depend on the primers and your the integrand of your PCR reaction. Because the different primers, they are different in terms of their sequence, right? ATCG. And for different nucleotide, ATCG, for A and T, the hydrogen bond is two, right? GC is three. So different number of the bond in, we calculate together, then they require different amount of the energy. Okay, so that's why the temperature is different for the aniline. So for the denature, where the DNA need to be split, it's a constant temperature. For the extension, where the polymerase start to be function to extend your DNA, it's a constant 72. So the only temperature that is different is the aniline temperature. So this is a machine that we use. So the main process is here, right? It's in 94. So this is an aniline temperature. So this is denature, aniline. And this is extension. Okay. So these are the main process. But before you start this, so this process is going to repeat 34 times. So just starting from here for 30 seconds. So this is the time. And then the temperature drop quickly to 49. And this is the time that the, for this reaction to happen. And then for the extension, one minute. Then after that, after they finish, they repeat the step two, repeat 34 times. Okay? But to make sure the PCR reaction is complete, usually before you start the PCR process, the first the three phases, you have the in initial also denature, so it's an initial process. Okay, so start to try to denature everything first for three minutes. Okay, then after that, start the PCR for 30 something cycle, 34 cycle. Then the last, before they end, they also extend the last extension. Okay, so during the 34 cycle, there might be some strain, DNA strain is not complete yet, extension. So after they complete the 34, then have the final stage of 72, make sure everything is complete. So the process will take about two hours in this case, total time. So if you are in the lab, then you can wait until two hours, then finish, take it out, keep in the fridge. Remember, even though after the PCR, the DNA degradation and the denaturation still happen, especially the DNA degradation. We don't want the degradation to be happen. So one way to keep it is to keep in the low temperature. So you remove from the machine and keep in the fridge. Sometimes you don't have time, okay, you're not going to wait. So what, you're going to leave it overnight. So what you can do is set the final stage after the 72 degrees Celsius of the final extension. Then keep the temperature to 4 degrees Celsius forever. Okay, until you come back and then remove it from the machine and put it in the fridge. So you have the initial denature, okay, aniline, Extension, then you repeat this 25 to 34 five times, uh, 25 to 35 times. The other day, keep in the fridge. Okay. So this is a complete PCR program. Okay. Three CR, there are three main phases, denature, aniline, and extension. But usually, if you run the PCR in the lab by using machine, this is the whole process. Okay. So the denature is when the double strand DNA is heated to separate into two single strands. Aniline is where the temperature is lower to enable the DNA primer to attach to the template. template. The extending process is the, then the 
temperature increase again to 72 so that the polymerase can, can help the nucleotide to attach to the new template to make a new strand. The DNA molecule. If you zoom in, this is how it looks like, right? Okay. So you can see G and C, A and T, the hydrogen bond is different. For example, these have three bonds. Okay, these have two bonds. Okay, the number of the bonds. And the, you also need to know the physical properties, the chemistry properties. So it's a five prime to three prime. Okay. So, five, so this is this is this one, and this is this one, eh? Okay. So you can see this is a five, right? Okay, this is a three, correct? This is five. So actually, it's a five to three, five to three. Okay, it's the opposite direction. So at the bottom, it's opposite. <coughs> okay. So when the extension happen, it's from the five to three. Eh? So this is what what in, in your reaction. So first, you have the primer. So it's a short fragment, right? And you also have a DNA template. You have a DNDB, okay, different nucleotides. You also have a polymerase. Okay, so these are the integrants, right? So then after that, you have the buffer. You also have a magnesium chloride. So the buffer and magnesium chloride is just to optimize the condition. Okay, so the buffer is to buffer the the reaction, make sure the pH is constant. The magnesium is for the is to is, is to activate the DNA polymerase. Then you also have the water. Everything is happening in the water. So during the denature, this is what happened. Okay, this is 94 degrees Celsius. And then, then the temperature dropped to 45 to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. So you can see the nucleotide, the sequence of the. So this is why you need a pair of primer, so attach in both direction. So now you know already you will you will amplify only this re region, right? Of course the DNA is, is much longer, okay, but you only amplify this region. Okay. Then during the extension when the temperature is 72, okay, then they will so so it's so it's not that the polymerase go to grab the nucleotide and then bring it there, no. So the polymerase is there because it's in the aqueous solution, so the Nucleotide is firing around in the solution. Okay. So it just keep extending okay. until, and, until it has finished. So in this case, after this is a one, only one cycle, right? After one cycle, you have one strand of DNA now become two. Okay. Of course, in the solution, you have a lot of the template, a lot of the nucleotide. Okay. And they're going to recycle the tech polymerase as well. So you just keep, keep doing this. After many cycles, then you have many, many sequences. Okay. So you can use a calculator to calculate after 35 cycles. If you have a starting material, just one strand of DNA, you already have millions. Okay. So how to sell in the lab? You just go to the v video. There's a video to show you how to do it. Okay. So after the PCR complete, okay. so you will, because the PCR reaction, so everything is still colorless. Eh? There's no color. Okay, all the reaction, everything is still transparent actually. You don't really know if you can if, if the PCR is successful or not successful. Okay? So ideally if you extract the sample, if you extract the DNA from the sample, if you keep the sample properly, preserve it properly, then you should have the DNA. Okay. Even though the DNA is degraded, you still be able to extract the DNA, right? Okay? But to for the PCR to be complete to happen, you need a complete strand of DNA. Just imagine if you're doing PCR, your your, your strand is is not complete. It's, it's broken here. Okay, it's broken here. Okay, even though you have the primer attached here, primer attached here, it will not happen in the PCR. Okay, so that's the reason why it's very important to keep your DNA intact, preserve it properly. After you run the PCR, then you can check whether the PCR is successful or not successful. You always have a DNA, just that whether the PCI is successful or not successful. If the, if the PCI is successful, that means you have multiplied the target region and you have a lot of the copies. 